What's up, guys? I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Steve Basic. Now, Steve, we're making a video about vented attics and doing insulation correctly. What the heck are we doing standing outside of this house? So, you know, on this one here, we have the Huber as our external primary air barrier, uh -huh. but that only goes up the walls. Okay. So we have to be able to complete that form across the top and across the bottom. The bottom's easily solved with the concrete slab and some stego. Yep. And then we bring it up the walls, but the trick is how do we solve it at the top of the roof? Okay, so what can we see on the outside that gives us a clue about that? So if you look up there, you can see a pretty little blue stripe taped to the primary air barrier. So yep. that's our air barrier going up and folding over. And then we make a series of connections inside to complete it. Uh -huh, I like it. We got a great video with some nerdy details. We're basically talking about how you cannot utilize drywall, but instead use another material you've probably not seen before that's very common in Europe, but starting to take off here in America. Today's build show about vented attics and doing the insulation right. Let's get going. Steve, I noticed when we were walking into this house, you've got headers in place, but none of the windows and doors got cut out. What's up with that? Yeah, so, you know, on a lot of our projects, when we can do it, I like to cut out the windows later because that allows us to test the integrity of our primary air barrier. Ah. So if we say our Zip R9 is our air barrier and we don't cut out the windows, we can get a blower door measurement of the Zip R9, then we can cut out the holes, install the windows, get another blower door, compare the numbers and understand what effect installing the windows has. Gotcha. Okay, now back to our topic today, which is sealing air tightness. Here's where things start getting interesting, Steve. I walk up and I immediately notice there's some type of fabric here on the ceiling, and then you've got some furring happening. Walk me through this detail. What is this material? So the membrane that is comprises the field of the ceiling here, it's Sega Myrex. It's a smart vapor retarder, okay. so moisture can pass through it. Um, very easily. It is a vented roof assembly. Okay. And it comes all the way to the end. You can see we have our Rison tape here. Now, what we did was when we framed the walls before we set the trusses, we folded over some Sega My Vest. It comes in an 18-inch roll. We can actually roll. see that, I think, down here. Yeah, Let's we have walk a down here while down we're here. talking. And so you took an 18-inch roll of this blue Sega My Vest material, and here it is right here. Yep. I'm going to take this light down so we can see a little better. So right, that's fold that, that material. Down. Fold that down and show us that it's blue. So there it is. Okay. So that's the blue we saw on the outside. Right. So, so that's that, over the double top plate. And it comes down the wall. So that's that blue tape line on the outside there. Got it. And then this simply just gets folded up. We have our double sided Sega tape here. So this gets folded up to there. And now we have a flange that we can bring our Sega Myrex over to go under that tape it off and we've now main con maintained continuity in our air barrier across the ceiling uh, that's pretty cool so in other words this membrane now is put up in place for air tightness instead of drywall now we're still going to put drywall up for aesthetic reasons but we're no longer worried about caulking ceiling doing all that stuff because this membrane is going to be our air tightness layer and even more interestingly steve it looks like you've put a two by four on the flat down on top of your top plates. We have a number of two by fours there and that provides a one and a half inch raceway now for all of our recessed lighting, our smoke detectors, any electrical boxes. Got it. So this, this Seeger Myrex is kind of like a, I don't know, I'd almost liken this to like a cap on a ball jar yeah. that is going to seal off the jar very tightly. And now we're going to, Try not to penetrate that, but where we need to penetrate it, let's say we have a vent pipe for the plumbers, we can do that. We just need to make sure that's taped and sealed later. And then why is this section here left off for so us? So this is left seeing? off for that very reason. The plumbers, the electricians, they all need access to the attic to get rid of the vent pipes, potentially run some electrical across the attic, gotcha. et cetera. And we're not having any HVAC up there, but mostly for the plumber. And the beauty of having the, the Myrex there is we could do our plumbing penetration, we can seal it up, and then we can test it immediately. 
before and, any of the insulation gets in. And now, Steve, you said it really quick, but I want to make sure that everybody caught that who's watching this. There's no HVAC equipment in the attic whatsoever. Right. We've eliminated that. We're either going to go uh, from the floors up, you know, from a, a lower system in the basement coming up. We might go out the walls for uh, uh, ERVs or for uh, exhaust fans, things like that. And then what's happening with this spray foam that I'm seeing over here, Steve? So the spray foam, you can see the black baffles. Those are our insulation baffles. It's a totally vented roof system that goes down to a vented soffit. The air baffles go down and then we basically seal them in. The blown in insulation here is the ability to get really good R value. We're probably at like R84-ish Wow. in R value, but we get it at a really inexpensive price because it's simply blown in. Right. It's the cheapest install we can get. But the problem is, is it's air permeable. And so you don't want to degrade the performance of the insulation by having cold air blow in through the side of it. You want all, all of right. the vented air to go up and around it. So we create that air barrier there. So we take the air permeability and we put it into that system. And if we didn't have these baffles in place, it, the wind when it blew up through our soffit vents could blow that insulation away from the edges and we could end up having great insulation in the center but hardly any insulation at the edges yeah. i've made that mistake before and we we've seen that, that in new england you you go up in the attic and there'll be a big scallop here yeah where all the insulation is stored in the middle of the roof so it's not that you can't use drywall as your air barrier oh. it's just a lot more details and there's a ton of great videos from Steve Basic and from others like Jake Bruton on our website showing how you can use drywall as your air barrier. But this is a fascinating product that uh, Steve and I have seen all over Europe and traveling and it's starting to really take hold in the US as well. And this works very well here, but understand if you're in climates like climate zones six or seven, mm -hmm. where you're required to have a vapor retarder at the ceiling level, mm -hmm. we have a smart vapor retarder. Got it. So this is a detail that you can move up into different climate zones and it still becomes the solution in the colder climate zones. It's a great detail. And I really like this, especially in the north where we are here, we're outside of Boston. It makes a lot of sense. We've got a basement, we've got our furnaces usually below. I wouldn't use this if you're thinking about HVAC equipment in your attic. This is not a detail that yeah. we want ductwork running through that attic space. But if you want to do a ventilated attic, which is a great assembly, it's very forgiving, this is a great way to go. Steve, impressive stuff, guys. We'll put a link to these products that we talked about from Sega in the description below. Uh, and check out Steve's videos. He's done a bunch of videos on this house and these details in particular over on thebuildshow.com. Lastly, this particular house we're in, Steve's making a whole series of videos called... It's the Multi-Gen on a Budget. So this is a multifamily house on a budget. It's gonna be a really fun project. We'll look for that coming soon on thebuildshow.com. That being said, go follow Steve on Instagram, go check out his videos, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.